Uh, good morning and uh, welcome to episode 23, March 3rd, 2015. Um, we did a curl release last week and um, yeah, I have to admit that um, doing these um, repetitive uh, releases every eight weeks like this, it makes uh, it makes all, all releases kind of uh, blend in and just fire and forget. I do a release and then I just boom, move on. I bump up the release number and then uh, commit a new re a release notes file in, in, in Git and uh, I continue merging things and move on. So it makes me kind of always feel that I don't really remember exactly what we did in the previous release because we're now working on the next one and we have already a bunch of bug fixes and a bunch of things in, in the pipe going on. But anyway, <clears throat> the the, the previous release 7.41.0, the, the current one that is uh, the, the, the stable release on the, on the site and everywhere, is getting um, supposedly in, added in distributions and, uh, distributions and so on. Uh, the, the, the big thing in there, uh, or the only really big thing, notable thing, is that we have support for OCSP stapling with a new uh, command line option called Verify Status, and there's a new <clears throat> no, not verify. It's called cert status, and there's a new uh, libcurl option too. Then accordingly, that's called SSL verify status, and it it asks the server to provide provide an uh, additional signature from the CA that the certificate is fine from the server, which is then a way to make sure that uh, the certificate is fine. Uh, Apparently not all servers support this, so it can't be used just blindly by default. So um, we'll see. Try that out. Search status. Dash dash search status. Um, there's of course a, a man page uh, and details for both of these. Just uh, read up about them. Good stuff. We are slowly getting more and better TLS support and, and features coming, and I, <clears throat> there will be more about that in, in coming releases. I also wanted to mention that in the curl re um, project, uh, I've been one of these kind of roadblocks when it comes to, like, for example, pull requests from GitHub, since I think that people are fire firing off pull requests a little bit too easy. I mean, they're not really following the project, they're not really adhering to our procedures and, and style and whatever, and just fire a pull request and, 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 and they don't send the, the patch for a review on the mailing list and so on, so people won't see it and won't review it and blah, blah, blah. But, well, I, I have to kind of backpedal on that position a bit now and say that I'm going to adjust to the to the new way of doing things, where the new way is the GitHub um, way. Really, since so many people are there, I figure it, it it would be stupid of me to stand in the way of that way of doing things too long, too much, too hard. So I'm 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 switching gears here and say that sure, go ahead, hit us with your pull requests, and I also open up the issue tracker on GitHub, and sure, file them there. And instead, I'm gonna ask everyone who is involved in the curl project and or related projects using curl a lot or whatever, whoever, if you're interested. Click the watch button on the on the curl repository on GitHub so that you get notified about new pull requests and new issues and so on, so that you can participate on GitHub um, when they when they pop up there. Uh, this of course is an attempt to just lower the friction, lower the bar of contributing, and, and allow more people to help us easier without us being too grumpy and saying blah blah blah. You should do it this way instead. And which I know that, of course, if you're a newbie and you want, just want to help out and you have found some problem and you want to just throw a fix at us, of course you don't want to have some uh, grumpy old timers from, from a project saying, nee, 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 you need to subscribe to this email list and, and send this mail here and there according to this format and so on. When apparently a lot of projects and kids and, and, and users and hackers these days are, are kind of used to do it the GitHub style which basically means pull requests. I'm still kind of encouraging uh, us who p actually push these patches to not use the GitHub merge features since they um, 
since I prefer a linear clean history. So, and also it makes it, it is it's way easier if you just if we download the patch and merge locally, since then we can amend and fix, polish the commit better before we actually push it. Let's see how this works out. I've seen that the, the number of watchers on the, on the repository has increased um, significantly since, since I, I mentioned this on the mailing list and I, I blog, blogged about it. So um, I think this will help. But okay, now we then have much more different um, areas where we can discuss curved stuff. And we now then have basically two issue trackers since we have the bug tracker still on SourceForge and the issue tracker now on, on GitHub. So uh not ideal there either but i haven't found any good way to migrate source footage tracker entries to github i mean there seems to be projects that do this but they all seem to be like oh, yeah it might work it's really slow and i haven't really dared to to do that of course i could create a, a, a test repository and, and see if it works but yeah mm, uh, let's leave it like this for now and see how things work and and, and just to um, Take one step at a time. Uh, last week, uh, yeah, last week, uh, I also blogged about um, this fun smiley URL campaign from actually from Coca Cola in Puerto Rico, I believe. They have a lot of billboards using um, URLs or URIs, whatever it is, whatever it's called, uh, with um, emojis in them, kind of www smiley.ws and I got an email from a friend who asked me about how, how it works with curl and uh, I kind of dug into that and um, and got a bit carried away and then I blogged about it and then it turned out that I was partly wrong about my blog post but it turned out fine anyway and it's, it's the interesting part basically is that emojis in, in a URL um, I mean that's the international domain name things and the, that's a complete mess I would say and I guess my blog post shows that too. So, uh, but but the, but the short version of that would be that if you actually type this smiley.ws hostname on, on the command line prompt, you can actually, on macOS, you can actually ping that host or what you think is that host, ping www.smiley.ws and it actually responds. But it turns out that, um, on macOS, when it does this get other info to, to translate uh, a name to an IP address, it'll do that, but um, but the WS top level domain, it re returns a kind of a wildcard answer to everything that is wrong and it sends them to a default IP address. And that's the name we get when we do ping or when we do curl on Mac for that domain. Doing curl on, uh, on Linux or Windows on this domain just fails because get other info on those platforms will just reject that host name completely which get uh, the the older version of, of resolving host names uh, get host by name and got get host by name underscore or they won't reject that host name but will resolve it the same way that the um, mac os does which makes it resolve to the wrong name and the browsers they use the idna 2003 standard which then resolves um, it converts that smiley um, utf8 to a um, one of these puny code uh, strings and resolves that string to a host name and that's host name is no sorry that address is what um, coca-cola the coca-cola campaign is using anyway i blogged about it kind of a just weirdo idea for anyone to post urls like that i mean they're bound to be more or less impossible to enter by hand at least on, on, a, on a regular computer i think it's fair slightly easier on, on mobile phones when you actually have more apps with the um, emoji functions <clears throat> i also um, and here is a kind of a test how much into um, um, HRP and uh, how much of a protocol geek uh, you are. If you're still kind of keeping up with my uh, efforts into um, uh, HTTP uh, framing and content length land, I landed my patch in Firefox again the third time with, with the little twist that I mentioned before that there, um, it is actually now checking or reverse is actually not checking for, for a premature cutoff if 
the content is compressed with the deflate content uh, encoding type and only with gzip i've talked about that too but uh, i can completely understand if you lost track or, or don't care anymore about this because we're into the very very nitty gritty teeny tiny details about http and, and uh, how the internet is not really adhering to those um, specs properly and how to do about that in a browser <clears throat> i like it not everyone does uh i didn't say that but i was away four days basically last week skiing in the swedish mountains five hours away from here on by car that was fun but it also made me um, not keep up properly with a lot of mails and, and stuff so i i'm slightly backlogged i'm um, trying my best to get back uh, on track and um sure, that's it uh next week yeah i have this um, tls and http2 stuff to work on i'm trying to polish my blog post to be more clear i there is a more crypto uh, meetup on Thursday this week in Stockholm, Sweden, if you're if you're here. And I'm going to be there and I'm going to talk a little bit about TLS and uh, certificates and stuff and, uh, and CURL together with uh, Ole then, one of the organizers of that. Um, otherwise, uh, I'm still working on the navigator.online thing for Firefox to make that work better. Um, I haven't really done a lot about that, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into that <clears throat> more going forward. Um, that's about it. Um, have a good week. See you again soon. <laughs>